Glenda, if she can please introduce our guest for today. Good morning again, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Morning. <laughs> Mr. Hiller, thanks for rising with us this morning as we represent in our name, Sunrise. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce Mr. Brenton Hiller, who is, who is the agency manager of Sagicor Life Dominica and has been in this position from January 2016. At present, he is also the Senior Vice President of Dominica's Association of Industry and Commerce, DAIC, a certified John C. Maxwell coach, teacher, trainer, and speaker, a Rotarian, being a member of the Rotary Club of Dominica, RCD, a Toastmaster, being a member of the Nature Isles Toastmaster Club, NITC. In the past, he has served as a director of Dominica's Association of Industry and Commerce, the AIC, director of the National Bank of Dominica, NBD, division C's director of Toastmasters International's District 81, responsible for a team overseeing clubs in the seven territories. He was the first individual from Dominica to have held this position. He holds designations of Certified Accounting Technician, CAT, Associate Life Management Institute, ALMI, Associate Customer Service, ACS, Competent Communicator, CC, Accredited Director, ACC BIR, Human Resource and Compensation Committee Certified, HR, CCC. In addition to the above, Brenton has done several courses with LOMA, LOMA, LIMRA, and UE Cave Hill Schools of Business on the topics of insurance, sales, sales management, strategic management, and leadership, to name a few. His previous speaking engagements have been, in 2016, featured speaker of the Rosso Primary School's graduation ceremony. Also in 2016, featured speaker of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's ECCB Financial Information Month, FIM theme launch. In 2017, featured speaker of the Adolescent Skills Training Program's graduation ceremony. In 2018, motivational speaker at Unicommerce staff meeting. In 2019, featured speaker of Orion Academy graduation ceremony. Also in 2019, featured speaker at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Central Bank, sorry, Financial Information Month, FIM theme launch. In 2020, Sales Fundamentals presenter at National Bank of Dominica, also in 2020, past student speaker at Dominica Grammar School. In 2021, public speaking at Sir Arthur Waldron Academy, also in 2021, developing business strategies at the Dominica Youth Business Trust. In addition to the above featured speaker engagements, he has also been invited to speak to various groups and organizations on topics of leadership, public speaking, insurance, financial management, and risk management. Some of these organizations are Rotaract Club of Dominica, JCI Dominica, Rotary Club of Dominica, Lions Club, Adolescent Skills Training Program, Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. He is a firm believer of the value that insurance can bring to our lives and businesses and he also enjoys speaking to educate, motivate, and inspire others. Mr. Hiller, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Is it possible for me to share my screen?
all yours. It's all yours. You can share it now. Okay, thank you. So, good morning. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Lucia and Brenda. It's a pleasure to be up with you all this early. It's actually the first time that I'm up at this time speaking. <laughs> So this is another first for me. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to say so. So I'm here to speak to us on a topic of your tomorrow starts now. Um, what I'm going to do is share some of my history as to where I've come from to where I am with the hope that it motivates you. Now, we've always heard that sometimes we hold things back not realizing that in doing so, we are actually limiting the growth of others. Because I, someone once said that every one of us has a book in us. We all have different experiences in life that we can share with others. And in sharing with others, sometimes we can motivate someone. So this is going to be my objective today. And at the same time, I know it's maternal and child health month. So I'm going to also see how I can tie that in into maybe a possible idea that your club could look at for the future. So you heard about my history. And um, yeah, over the past few years, I've been a bit aggressive with trying to push myself forward. I believe in educating ourselves. Learning never stops regardless of where we are in life. But the question is, did I just end up there? <laughs> Did I just wake up one morning and say, hey, this is my list of things that I've done? And the answer would be no. <laughs> so the question is, where did I start? And this is a story that I have only recently started sharing with persons because there was a point in time where I was a bit ashamed of it. But as I mentioned, in hiding these things, we are possibly limiting the growth of all of us because other people sometimes go through the same experiences and hearing about your story motivates them. So my first job in life was actually cleaning spare parts. Now I remember coming from college, you know, this college graduate, well excited, it's gonna be my first job. I'm gonna make money on my own and be independent. Life begins. And I got a call from a place that I applied telling me that yes, they are going to hire me. So my first day, I'm well dressed up, dressed pants, dressed shirts, dressed shoe, walking proudly with my head held high, going to the office. And then when I enter the office, this individual tells me, okay, come. So I follow him and we're walking towards this sort of, I would say, storeroom. And he brings me inside of the storeroom and he walks me to a shelf, takes a rag, gives me the rag and tells me your job is to take down these spare parts, dust them off, and then put it back up. And I stood there and I was like, wow, is this what I went to school for? <laughs> is this the end for me? Is this what I'm going to be the rest of my life, someone cleaning spare parts? No, I mean, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with it, but for the expectations that I have for myself, you can imagine that that was a big disappointment. And I think oftentimes we find ourselves in situations where we expected more for ourselves, but we get disappointed. And we sometimes make the mistake of accepting the disappointment. We agree to lower our standards and go with the flow. It is what it is. That is life, as we would say. But from that day, First day, I asked myself the question, was that the end of my journey? Was that where I was going to end up for the rest of my life? And the answer was no. And it takes me to a quote from Tony Robbins, an American author. How am I going to live today in order to create the tomorrow that I am committed to? And that really propelled me to act differently because I told myself that I was not going to stay in that position. This was not my calling in life. But I was going to act in a way where I was living towards my expectations. So what I did is that every single day, I still dressed up. 
I put on my dress shirt, I put on my dress pants, I put on my dress shoes, went to work. And then when I went in work, I took off my shirts, I had my other shirt and did my job. And then at the end of the day, I dressed back up, went outside. So everybody who saw me outside saw that I was gainfully employed, but nobody knew what I was doing. That was my biggest secret. And you see, because I committed to the process, it was natural then for me to transition from this sort of career or job into a more professional setting. Because imagine if I had maintained the attitude of, hey, this is the job, this is it. I'm going to work in jeans and t-shirts. Who would have looked at me to possibly give me an office job if that's how I was dressing? So I dressed with the expectation that one day I was going to be in an office. So the question is, in our capacity today, even if we're not happy with where we are at right now, what can we do today to prepare ourselves to commit to the person that we want to be? Now, as this pertains to maternal and child health, I mean, the importance of it, to keep it very simple, is that their health determines the health of the next generation. If we cannot have healthy babies being born, healthy mothers taking care of the babies, it is going to affect the generation in the future because unhealthy babies, unhealthy parents need to increase bills on the state if the state is supporting them or on the family. And the old adage is health is wealth. So it is in our interest to find some way of contributing towards the process of ensuring that the different stages of maternal and child health uh, taking care of. Now the question is, going back to my first point, quote from Tony Robbins, what can the Rotary Club do in order to contribute towards it? And I know that you all have started your activities already based on what I heard earlier. So maybe it's something for the club to consider going forward or maybe it's something that the entire organization can think about. And I sat last night thinking about it and I said, what can we do today to commit to the future that we want in terms of maternal and child health. And one thing that came to my mind was maybe we can start targeting the most marginalized. Because yes, the different Caribbean states have subsidized health care system set up. But I believe that we have a high incidence of poverty in the Caribbean. And there are a lot of people who go through the process of becoming pregnant, having a child, without having the support that they should have. And I often hear people complaining about the state of society today, but it starts right from the beginning. So maybe we can start looking at those who are most affected through the process and seeing what we can do to support them. Now I'm going to the second stage of my life. When I transition from cleaning spare parts to my first office job. Now, as I mentioned, the transition was quite easy because I was already in the habit of dressing up. And that's when my accounting career started. I started working at the Fortune Hotel in the accounts department. But the question is, was that the end of my journey? And I'm not one to become satisfied with any position. Success is temporary. Failure too is temporary. So we always have to keep moving and see how we can continue growing from the foundations that we have laid before. So there's a quote by Bill Copeland that says, the trouble with not having a goal is that you spend your life running up and down the field and you never score. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we become comfortable. We've been doing that for the past year, for the past three years. Um, we accept it as tradition. We accept it as what it's supposed to be. But the question is, what is our goal? What are we truly working towards? Even though I worked in that office, I knew that someday I wanted to be in a managerial position. I wanted to be a leader. So that was just a stepping stone. And even today, I mean, it's really easy for human beings to just settle with what is. I go to the gas station sometimes and the person who pumps my gas is the same person who I remember from my high school days pumping gas. And I ask my, myself the question, why do you accept 
that standard for yourself. But then, as I mentioned, some of us did not have the liberty of hearing our journey in order to motivate us. So I was in a position, and after five years, I applied for an open position that was available. It was for the senior accounting position. I figured I was well knowledgeable at that point. I should have qualified. Sent in my application, and I just got no. And I sat to myself and I thought, wow, a slap in my face. Dedicated five years, put in the work, working the extra hours, and all I get is a no. And a lot of us have experienced that situation where somebody stops us. We see what we want for ourselves, we go for it, and somebody tells us no. But the mistake we sometimes make is that we accept the no. And I refuse to accept that no. You could have told me no for that position, but you were not telling me no for the future of my life. And I told myself from that point in time that I was going to look for something else, an opportunity elsewhere, where I could live out the dream that I had for myself, that I could pursue it. And that led me to my third career, which I'm going to touch in in a while, but bringing it back now to maternal and child health. So the action we spoke about earlier maybe is to target the most marginalized in society, those who are not as fortunate as the others to access the different systems, healthcare benefits, the education that they need as it pertains to that. But that is the action. And as I mentioned, you can get into action and just keep going and going and going and you end up nowhere. So what is the ultimate goal that Rotary could have as it pertains to maternal and child health? And once again, I sat down, I thought, and I said, hmm, maybe it's about empowering women. And I think in society today, we have reached a stage where women tend to feel that they don't have a choice. They don't have hope. They find themselves in situations and they are on their own. They have to depend on someone. So maybe our ultimate goal through implementing this sort of activity is to, at some point in the future, ensure that the women in society, especially the most marginalized ones, are empowered. But I mean, we start with the marginalized ones, but at the end of the day, at some point, I think it has to be extended to everybody. Because even persons who are more fortunate or more financially better than others are not empowered. Because empowerment is not just about access to the different facilities, but it is also our mental state. So you can have the money, but if you don't understand what it means to be fully in control of your destiny and your child's destiny, you still are at a disadvantage in life. So the ultimate goal could possibly be empowering women. Now we go on to my third job where I transitioned into where I started this journey before my current position. So I joined the administrative team of my company as an accountant. So I got the doorway and there's a saying that goes, you put your faith in God, you trust God, you tell God what you want. And I said it earlier, I knew from young that I wanted to be in some sort of senior managerial role. And then the how is up to God. Because I never imagined that I would have ended up in the accounting position that I was in. I just knew that I wanted it. So funny enough, when I started looking for the opportunity, it just opened up out of nowhere. And they say, when you have the spirit of expectation and faith, doors just open for you. There's no way to explain it. It just opens up and it's like life tells you, come, come for all the blessings. But you have to have that mindset and that's one of the reasons why I am, they say, <laughs> overly optimistic. If anyone follows my social media pages, every single day, I started off with positivity. There's no level of negativity that I will accept on my life. And we sometimes accept curses, and I'm going to call it a curse. We sometimes accept curses on our lives through a simple mistake of a joke. Now, sometimes you might tell your friend, oh, but girlfriend, you're crazy, man. That's a curse. You see, life and death 
liveth on the tongue. The Bible tells us that. But we take it for granted. So by somebody making a quote-unquote joke and telling us, you're crazy, or you're foolish, or you're stupid, and you just sit there and take it, is you accepting those words for yourself. From a very young age, my mother used to tell me, as boys, don't insult each other, don't make those kind of jokes with each other. And back then, I did not understand what she was saying. But today, I really see the benefit of that message because what we listen to, what we hear, what we accept becomes our reality. What your mind thinks is what your body is actually going to push off. And then sometimes we actually push blessings away. How many of you have ever had somebody come and tell you, hey, boy, you look like a million dollars today? Has anyone ever had that compliment before? And then how many of us have reacted by saying, no, I don't have a million dollars? That used to be the traditional way of responding to that message. And what you're doing is somebody is actually putting positive words on your life, blessing you, and then you are pushing it away. So right now, whenever somebody tells me that, I tell them, thank you for the blessing. Even if I may not have it, but I say thank you for the blessing. That's the kind of things I want to accept on myself. So very important to us to also remember, accept positive words in your life. Don't accept jokes that are negative. So even in my accounting position, it still was not the end for me because I wanted to go further. I wanted to go as high. I want to go as high as I possibly can. I still have the dream of reaching even higher. And in that position, what I told myself was every day, and that's a quote from Doug Fireball, what can I do to bring myself closer to where I want to be? And that's when I joined Toastmasters because I realized that to be in a leadership position, I needed to be able to communicate. I mean, before Toastmasters, I would have never come on this meeting to speak to you. That would have been taboo. But I realized it was a skill that was necessary to take me to where I wanted to go. So I joined Toastmasters not knowing that I would have had the opportunity for leadership in the future, but just knowing that it would have been needed. And funny enough, about a year, year and a half after joining and becoming a better speaker, I got the opportunity to speak in front of my vice president of sales. And when he heard me speak, he said, I believe you're capable for this current job that I am in right now, which is the sales management job. So I did not know that the opportunity would have opened up, but I was preparing myself for whatever opportunity that there was. And that goes back to what I said earlier, when you have the mindset, and when you put in the work, it's like life just opens up for you, right? Tells you, take everything that I have to offer. Now, that also ties back to my public speaking career. So you heard a long list of different engagements that I have found myself in, but it all started with one opportunity, just one. You see, because I, as I mentioned, I did Toastmasters, I improved my public speaking skills, not knowing that I would have needed it. And I can never forget that one first day, I received a call from the place that I spoke at the Rosero Primary School. And I was told that the graduation ceremony was on Monday and they had a previous speaker and the previous speaker backed out. Now, the normal human being would have said, first day to Monday, you want me to prepare a speech for graduation? No, but this first individual said, Yes, that's my opportunity. So I said yes, but then I put in the effort after over the weekend to try and come up with a good presentation. And from that point, as you can have, as you can see, every year after I've been invited to some different events or school organization to speak. But it's only because of that one opportunity that I said yes to. And sometimes we have opportunities that come our way, but we push it away because we think that we are not ready. And I like what John Maxwell says. John Maxwell says, build your wings when you're falling down. Jump off the cliff and then figure out how to fly. So sometimes we have to take the risk of saying yes, even if we are not ready, but then get ourselves ready after the yes. But even before that, we need to start finding 
ways of building up ourselves so that we can be ready for any opportunity that comes up. We cannot predict life, we cannot predict the blessings that are going to come, but we need to be prepared for when it comes. Now, bringing that back to maternal and child health. So we spoke about the action, maybe targeting the marginalized with the overall goal of empowering women. But the question is, what can we do on a daily basis or on a more frequent basis to contribute towards this goal? So I thought of maybe making our responses more context specific. What I mean by that is everybody's situation is different. Every community has a different need. I'm not too sure what it is like in St. Martin, but in Dominica, for example, from the top of my head, I can think of certain villages that are more financially disadvantaged than other communities that's from the top of my head. So obviously the way that we speak to them, if we had to pursue something like this, would be more towards providing them with the support, the systems that they need that they cannot afford on their own. And then I also know about other communities who do have the finances to afford those systems and support. But their issue might be more of education. So if I'm going to that community, my approach to them would be more about educating them on the different aspects of maternal and child health. So it's about making the message really targeted to the specific group with the overall goal of still empowering women. It's just that the approach of each individual or each group is going to be different. Now, in terms of where I'm at present, so I got the opportunity to come here. And it has been a journey, as you can see. It started from me dusting spare parts in a storeroom, and me becoming an accounting clerk, accountant, and then finally here. But one thing I will always say is today, I am going to do things that others are not willing to do so that I can accomplish what others can accomplish. And that's a quote from Jerry Rice. You see, for example, public speaking, I spoke about Toastmasters. I told you about the benefits and how it has helped me. But do you know the biggest fear in life is public speaking? People will actually tell you, kill me before you set me on the stage and speak. That's how bad it is. And you see, once you realize that and then you're willing to develop your skills in that area, you obviously know others will not, so it naturally gives you an advantage. So in our own life, what are the different areas where we think that we can jump into that others are afraid to jump into? Because there is opportunity all around us. Not everyone will go after it. Not everyone will grab onto it, but there is opportunity. And we have to be willing to do things that others are not. I mean, even to this day, I work some crazy hours. People tell me I work too hard, but I'm willing to do it in order to achieve the success that I want to accomplish. In two years since joining the job, Dominica became the top island in our company within two years, but it wasn't easy. It was hard, it was difficult. I had to put in long hours, but the fact is, I made this sacrifice while others were sleeping so that my team could be successful. So bringing it back home, as I mentioned, I'm trying to tie the message back to the whole concept of maternal and ch child health. So what can Rotary do that is not being done or is not as being, being done as lovely or frequently to be different in its pursuit of maternal and child health? And what came to mind was the whole concept of teenage pregnancy. It is a taboo subject. We talk about it on the gossip sides among ourselves in our small circles, but there isn't any national agenda to try to address it, to try to curb it. And that brings back the issue to the societal challenges of today, where it is said that children are making children. So what can we do to start curbing that habit? Maybe it goes back to the whole concept of making our responses specific to the groups. Can we start programs in the high schools, the colleges to speak to women about the importance of safe sex 
or abstaining or being careful. Can we get our men involved in the process and tell the men, leave the girls alone? You see, it's different. It's not something that is done, but others are not willing to do it. So are we now willing to take that mantle? So in summary, at the end of the day, tomorrow is your choice. Whatever you want to accomplish tomorrow, whatever route you want to accomplish tomorrow, it's really up to Rotary. It's never too late to start. You can today start laying down the things that you need to do in order to be who you want to be tomorrow. I want to remind us that achieving your goals are not impossible. Whatever you put your mind to, hard work, strategy, can take you there. Trusting God can take you there. Positive words, as I mentioned, don't accept those negative jokes in your life. That is a curse. We don't want curses. We want positivity. And even if you might feel that you are a certain age or you've done so much and you're still not where you want to be, remember that everyone has a different path in life. And I think our paths are unique to the place that we have to go. So God has certain things ready for us waiting, but based on what he has ready for us, he's telling us that we need to get some things in place first, and then he will grant it to us. So don't look at someone else's situation and use it to sort of limit yourself or tell yourself that it's not for me. It's just that you have a different journey to take. Don't limit yourself like that. So I hope that my message was of some inspiration to someone on this call. And maybe the ideas that I shared pertaining to maternal and child could someday be a major project that Rotary can support going forward because I believe that if we look at what's happening in society today, we have to start addressing this matter from the roots. It's not about children, but it's about the whole parenting aspect that I believe needs to be fixed in society. So. Once again, thank you for having me. I don't know if anyone has any questions as it pertains to some of the things I said a part of my journey, but I'm here if you do. Thank you very much for that inspirational talk. Uh, I would like to open the floor now to any questions that, may, that our members may have. I don't Thank you so much, Mr. Hilaire. I didn't have a question. I just um, really had a comment. I think your life story is really inspirational. And um, as the incoming president, I think you've given me some food for thought for a project for maternal and child health in the incoming uh, in a Rotary year. That's great. I look forward to hearing about those details once you come on board in that position. Yeah, they were really good ideas, you know. Get it from the root, basically. Don't let it grow in when it comes to certain things. And just about, it doesn't matter what role you're in because you can always grow as a person as well. Very, very inspirational. And I really would like to thank you on behalf of the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise for that inspirational morning talk. You know, our day will go well. It started with a positive, positive mindset. So thank you very much for that. It's a pleasure. I as well would like to say thanks for that very inspiration, inspirational um, speech, Mr. Hillier. It's and it's a good way to start the day, being positive. That's how I start every single day. Very important. One of our Rotarians actually does the same as you. His name is Prakash, better known as Peter, but he's not here now. He starts um, his mornings every morning with an inspirational quote. So when you said that, you know, I like, okay, we have someone in this group that has the same, you know, the same thing about life like you. So thanks. Yeah, I again. thought of Peter as well. Yeah, <laughs> too, actually. every morning faithfully, he sends out a motivational um, little quote. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Moving on, we have upcoming events. The board meeting is on the 15th of April, which is this Thursday at 7 p.m. 
If anyone has points that they would like to bring up to the board, please either send it to myself or Damali so we can put it on the agenda. Uh, we have a treasurer's meeting, which will be on April 22nd. This is a meeting that has been in the making for a while now. We have next week, we have David Antrobus, who will be speaking to us. And don't forget that on the 24th of April, we have our Diabetes Walkathon, which is a joint project with all... Um, Sunset and mid -Isle Club. At this point, I'm just going to give a little update on the tickets that were sold. Just give me a moment. Um, so far, we have a count. We have, the club has 100 tickets. Uh, Damali has sold five tickets. Peter and Jerna have sold a total of 13 tickets. I sold seven. Oh, seven? Okay, we have, we have to update that. This is the last count that I have. Um, Glenda sold I, sold I sold 10. Yeah, I have that. I have, uh, Cookie was given 10 tickets. He has sold seven. Marcy was given five tickets. Claudia was given five tickets. I was given five tickets. I have sold three so far. Uh, for everyone else, please just send an update to Peter because he's the one keeping records of this uh, for the amount of tickets so he knows exactly what is being sold. And that is going to be the... How not, many have been sold in total from the club? I have. I didn't really add it up. Do so uh, you have my I will, that I sold, darling? Is it there? Because September is what Give me one second. Okay. I have nine Glenda sold. Yes. Okay. I will, what I'll do is I'll ask um, if everyone can just send the amount they've sold again to Peter, he can update it and we can put it in our regular group so that everyone would know. Sounds good? The updated list today, whatever you felt it sold till now. And with that, we uh, conclude our meeting. And I'm going to give it back to the Sergeant at Arms for the collection of the happy dollars. Yes, we are right here. Um, and I'm waiting for some of the members to. Um, post the happy dollar in the chat, or you, they can send me the personal message on my WhatsApp and I will make a note of it. Um, till third quarter, the commitment list was sent to members. Dolly, was it or no? Uh, yes, it was, but we had not the updated one, but I have yeah. asked um, Kate to put the happy dollars in their statement. So for those who have not paid their happy dollars, you will see those in your statement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in the fourth quarter statement, so you will also- I just wanted to remind them that. Yeah. So if you haven't uh, paid happy dollars till what, for whatever reason till now, it will show up on your statement as happy dollars. So what you're saying is that, uh, uh, they should be up to date once they have paid their third quarter, then only remaining balance would be as they go on now pledging for fourth yes. quarter. Yes. Okay, okay. All right, thanks, Dolly. Okay, perfect. I'm updating um, Peter right now. Amanda, you sold nine? 10, she said 10. 10, Ten. and Glenda, you sold how many? Nine. I have sold three. Nine before. for me, Damali. Excuse me? I have sold, I sold three. Nine. Nine. Yeah, he, he has that already. I have sold three so far. Bernard is saying that she will drop off her 50 and pick up the tickets. To, um, Bernard, can you let us know when you will be able to do that? 
She can write it in the chat or she will send the message to Peter, I guess. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the morning of 13th, um, I would again like to thank Mr. Hilaire very much for that inspirational talk and for our members and guests who visited us today. Thank you so much. And with that, I am going to conclude our meeting for today. Thank you and have a great day. Dolly? Yes, ma'am. Can I just say something? Sure, of course. Um, the conference has been canceled in the Bahamas. Okay. Because they did not get through with vaccinating everybody. Okay. So to be on the safe side, they canceled it for now. Thank you. Thank you so much for that update. It's much appreciated. You. You're welcome. Okay. With that, I'm going to say good morning and have a fantastic day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Hilaire. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.